Houston, contact with a test. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. Roger, Hawaii, read you lot, clear also. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one, end of test. Okay, we checked all four systems, and there you go on modulation, all four, and keying with a go. Roger, your lot, clear here also. The union of husband and wife is intended by God for their mutual joy, for the help and comfort given each other in good times and difficult times, and in God's timing for the creation of family. Therefore, marriage is not to be entered into casually or without thought, but reverently, deliberately, and aligned with the purposes for which God created it. So Uh, we met on Tinder, actually, which is uh, surprising. I mean, I just, we, it was a whim. We both downloaded it, and both of our friends said to download it, so. On our first date, I was just, like, instantly comfortable with him. And, like, I'm not, I'm a very shy person. And so I guess after that, I was just like, well, this could work out. <laughs> I knew she was one from then because I brought her to my parents' house on the second date, which is pretty awkward. And my mom fell in love. Once she fell in love, I knew. You know, real love is selfless. It puts others first. Real love is sacrificial and serving. You put your mate before yourself, doing what you can to support them, encourage them, pray for them, rejoice with them, mourn with them, and champion them. You take a back seat to each other. And the neat thing is when both spouses do this, it's a really beautiful thing. You meet each other's needs by living sacrificially and selflessly, and there's so much more joy and satisfaction in that compared to looking out for your own interests first. Um, we were at her house, which are her parents' house, and I worked for her dad, so I was there for work the next day and everything, and her parents let us sleep over for the first time. And we, just sitting there and enjoying each other's company, I was like, I knew it. I was like, it's time to say it. Um, he jokingly said it like the next, like the day after we met. He was like, all right, love you, bye. And then he told me like one day, I don't know, like a month and a half and he was like, you know I love you, right? And I was like, okay, thanks. <laughs> Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. The very thing about him, he's very generous and kind. Like he never meets a stranger. He makes everyone feel uh, warm and welcomed. I know, he's just very outgoing and I'm not, so. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous, not boastful, not proud or rude. Love does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. It keeps no record of being wrong. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth comes out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Christopher, do you take Madison to be your wife? I do. Madison, do you take Christopher to be your husband? I do. Do you promise to love, honor, cherish, and protect her, forsaking all others, holding only onto her, and holding only onto him forever? I do. I do. I, Christopher, take you, Madison. I, Madison, do you keep Christopher? To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. In this day forward, for better or for worse. For riches or poor, and in sickness and in To love and to cherish the death of his To the death of his Dear Madison, I love you. You look beautiful. Um. I'm so ready to spend the rest of my life with you. Dear Christopher, um, 
I'm so excited for today. We've been talking about this day for years and it's finally here. Um, and I can't wait to start our life together and just see what God has in store for us. And I love you. This ring I give in pledge. This ring I give in pledge. As my sign of love and devotion. And with this ring I be wed. With this ring I be wed. Christopher and Madison, having witnessed your vows together before marriage and everybody who is here, by the authority vested in me, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss your bride. Three things will last forever, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two stand, can stand back to back and conquer. And three are even better, for a triple corded braid is not easily broken. And now while this may not have been written specifically towards marriage, we can draw some good principles from it. One being that the two of you are now one unit. You look out for each other. You're there for each other, just as we've mentioned. But the second principle comes in when there's a third party mentioned. And for the context of marriage, that third party is God. God has to be at the heart of your marriage. He has to be the foundation upon which you build your marriage and your new lives together. Never neglect that. He doesn't promise a perfect marriage, but he does promise to be with you and to carry you through both the good and the bad. So go to church together, but do more than that. Plug in and serve. And when the kiddos start coming, pledge to teach them the ways of God. When you operate in and through God's design, you will find that there's more fulfillment in that than any other way could provide. So I'm excited for the two of you. I'm proud for the two of you, we all are. And I know everyone here wants nothing but the best for you. God, I thank you for this day. And I thank you for Madison and Christopher and that the love that they have for each other. Help them to build their new lives with you as the foundation. Guide them, help them to seek you above everything else. And may the love that they have for each other demonstrate the love that you have for us. And God, use them in ways that they can't even imagine to show your love to a world who desperately needs it. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray, amen. And it is my pleasure to introduce to you for the first time, Mr. and Mrs. Christopher Waldrop.